Okay, everybody, this is our little attempt at Newton's rings today, a little Newton's rings demonstration. We have a little convex lens, which is only convex on one side, and a little flat bit of glass. And when you put that convex lens on top of that bit of glass, you get an air wedge between the convex lens and the flat glass surface. So when you look down upon that, then we should see an interference pattern that's made of concentric rings, but we have to use monochromatic light. So I'm going to use a sodium lamp. The difficulty is we want to shine the sodium lamp directly down onto that um, convex lens. But we also want to look directly down onto it as well. And to be able to do that, we use this wee bit of apparatus here, this little beam splitter. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put the flat glass plate and the convex lens in there. Slow that in. And then we're going to move this so that the sodium lamp is shining directly into the apparatus on this side, the sodium light will hit that slanted 45 degree angle glass plate. It will reflect light down through the convex lens and then that light will be reflected back up again so that we can look directly down onto it. Now, if I look directly down onto that just now, then we can certainly see the sodium lamp. We don't see the interference pattern. So we need a travelling microscope. A travelling microscope is going to allow us to look more closely at this. So remember, our sodium lamp is giving off monochromatic light. The monochromatic light is coming in, reflecting down through the Newton's rings apparatus, back up again through the glass, and we will use our travelling microscope to see if we can have a look at the pattern. So, here we go, we'll have a little look, here's the apparatus, let's see if we can have a... There we go, there's my Newton's rings. And we should be able to measure the distance between these dark fringes, which will allow us to measure the wavelength of the sodium lamp. We have our Newton's rings relationship. Let's go and see if we can do that. Now, but we're using a little vernier scale here. That vernier scale will allow us to position one of the rings and then move the microscope to the tiny bit distance. Um, and that will allow us to measure that fringe separation. See that again. There it is. Now, I might be able to show you this. As I move the travelling microscope, and that's me on one ring, I can then move it to the next ring, next ring, next ring, and so on. So, I really maybe want to count about 10 fringe spaces. Anyway, we'll see how we go on. All right, troops, got a wee bonus for you here. We're going to do Newton's rings. We are going to see if we can determine the wavelength of that sodium vapour lamp, the wavelength of the light from that sodium vapour lamp. That's our aim. And we do it using this apparatus here and that little relationship there. Now, it's not in the course, it's not in the advanced diet, of course. But here's what we do. We get a little lens. A little lens has got a radius of curvature of half a metre. Looked it up on the manufacturer's uh, data sheet. And we put that little convex lens on top of that glass slide. And you get an air wedge between the convex lens and the flat glass slide. And that air wedge, when you look down on it and you move your eye from left to right, or your head from left to right, then you will see an interference pattern. But it's an interference pattern made of rings. 
So there's a fringe spacing between each ring. We're not going to measure that del X though. We're going to measure the radius of each ring. And the radius of each ring, the radius of each fringe, goes into that relationship. That's it there, the radius of each fringe. M is the order of the fringe. R is the radius of the convex lens, it's half a metre. And uh, we're going to get a relationship then between the radius and the order of the fringe. And hopefully be able to determine the wavelength from that. So, here's the apparatus. We're going to use a travelling microscope to measure the radius of the fringes. We are going to put this little assembly inside the beam splitter. And remember, the reason for that is that we can shine. The sodium lamp comes in this way. It reflects off the glass and goes down through the convex lens, reflects off the glass slide at the bottom, and we can put the travelling microscope over the top. So, there's my travelling microscope. It goes in that position. And we're pretty much good to go. So that's everything in position. We're looking down on this from above. And if I put my camera down on top of that, we should hopefully see my Newton rings pattern. It is. And I've set my cross here, right in the middle of the pattern. And then by moving the traveling microscope, by moving this little screw to the side, choo -choo -choo, I can move the scale on the Vernier scale and make some measurements of the radius of each of those fringes. Now, I'm not just going to measure one fringe. I'll maybe measure the first six out from the middle. That means we can draw a graph. So, we'll see how we get on. So, I'm using this Vernier scale to measure with the position of my cross here right at the start, and it's right on six centimetres or 60 millimetres. And then I'm going to move the cross here to the first radius, and then we will measure the position and the zero when that Vernier scale is again. Right, I've moved my cross here out to the first circular fringe out from the middle, and now measuring on the Vernier scale. Again, that's been worn right out, but that is 6.05, 6 6 so 60.5 millimetres. So my radius will be half a millimetre. Right, I have done that for each of the circular fringes measured out from the middle. So the first order fringe. The radius was half a millimetre, and then as I moved it out, that was the second ring, third ring, fourth ring, fifth ring, sixth ring, seventh ring, the radius was getting bigger. Uh, I need to convert them into metres and square them. And then we can do a little graph for us to get the wavelength of the light. Then we really want a graph that is R squared against M. And that will give us a gradient of lambda r. Let's do some maths. All right, those are my r squared values. So we've measured the order of the fringe and the radius of the fringe squared. And we're going to draw a graph of these two columns. Then r squared will go in my y-axis, m will go in my x-axis. That means r squared over m will be equal to lambda r. So the gradient of my graph will be equal to the wavelength of the light. That will be a half the wavelength of the light because the radius of the lens is 0 0.5. So the gradient of my graph should be about... Hmm, well, the wavelength of sodium light should be 589 nanometers. So half of 589 is about 295, 294. Well, let's see how we got on. So there's my Excel spreadsheet of my results and my graph. So the table on the left there has got the first column, the order of the fringe. That's the number of the ring out from the centre. First ring, second ring, third ring, up to seven rings. And the second column, R squared, is the radius of those rings 
in meters squared and because r squared goes into a relationship um, and then we have the graph of those results so r squared on my y-axis and the order of the fringe on the x-axis now if you look at the gradient of the graph, I've asked Excel to display the equation in the line in the form of y equals mx plus c. We see that the gradient is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Now that will be half the wavelength because when we rearrange the equation, then r squared over m equals lambda times the radius of curvature of the convex lens. The radius of curvature of the convex lens was half a meter. So therefore, the gradient is half the wavelength. Now, so if we double 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7, we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 7, which is 560 nanometers. And from the manufacturer's um, data sheet, the wavelength of the sodium lamp light is 589 nanometers. So we're about 29 nanometers out. And for those of you that love your uncertainties I've done the lionest data that will give us the uncertainty in that gradient that's the left hand column there we're interested in there's the top one is the gradient 2.775 times 10 to the minus 7 the one underneath it 1.299 times 10 to the minus 8 is the uncertainty in the gradient and if you work that out as a percentage then the uncertainty in the gradient is about six percent and 6% of our experimental value for the wavelength of sodium light, we got 560 nanometers. 6% of that is plus or minus 33 nanometers. And remember, we were only 28 nanometers out. So, our determined value is pretty good within the limitations of our experimental uncertainties. That's Newton's rings then to determine the wavelength of sodium light using interference by division of amplitude. See you in the next one.